if you're here, I'm assuming you want to know how people are making the still images in Squad 44 <coughs> Postscript. Um, I'm going to go for the basics and the very beginning of how to do it. There's a hell of a lot of stuff that goes into more advanced techniques and making stuff, but this is just going to be a very pure basic understanding how to do it. And then hopefully from there you can start working it out and getting better. Okay, so when you open the SDK, you'll be on the screen. You just want to close this window as it's not really important to us. Next, you will need to create a folder. Uh, this is mainly so if you create a mod, you don't mess up the files because um, that can get a bit iffy. I don't create mods, so it's fine. But if you are going to be creating mods, I advise you to make a separate folder compared to the other game because this is where you add in the maps and stuff like that. You can change the color of the file if you want to, if it's easier. You just right click that, go up to set color, choose what color you want. Uh, it can be helpful if you've got a lot of files. And now we're going to create a folder to put uh, your maps in. Exactly the same thing, right click, create a new folder. Uh, now we are going to get the map that you want to take the photo on. By doing this, you click on content, find postscriptum, you then go into maps. Go into the expensive layers because that's uh, the easiest one I use. Find the map you want. When you find the map you want, you want to right click. This will take a while to load if it's the first time, but you will just wait and it'll be fine. Before you actually do that, you might want to jump into the actual maps and figure out which layer has the right time of day you want. There is ways of changing it yourself, but I'm too thick for that. So I just find out which layer I want. I uh, then right click that and wait for it to come up. All right, a week later, it will have loaded. Now you will need to choose the option duplicate. You can now name it as you please. I do tend to have the map name in there just in case you forget what it actually is if you've got a lot of maps going on at the same time. Okay, once you have done that, you want to move the map into your new folder. You can do this by just dragging the map into that new created folder and clicking on move here and wait for it to move and load in. You can double check it, just go into the folder that you made, double click in obviously your new folder, then maps, and then it should be there. Double click that map and wait another week and it should load in for you. You want to close this window again, it is not important. You now have a map with loads of lines and some weird stuff. Don't worry about that. Just to get rid of that, you press G and boom, it's gone. Magic. Fucking lovely. Uh, you might be thinking why the grass looks weird. Yes, it does. To fix this, you want to go to the search bar in World Outliner and type Render. Then underneath that, you want to left click on Landscape Renderer and scroll down in the details window. Then click on a render landscape. Don't try this at home with your garden, it doesn't work and your wife thinks you're a fucking freak. Now all you gotta do is fly around the map, find where you want your photo to take place and get ready for the next part. Happy flying. All right, next you need to make the scene. To add an asset, you need to go to the content folder. All right, click on the filter tab and click on the static and skeletal meshes. Don't worry about particles, you don't need that or the rest of the list. Just skeletal and static mesh is all you need. All right, you now want to scroll down in the content browser and find Postscriptum. Click that and there you go. You've got all the Postscriptum assets you can put into your map, static and skeletal meshes. And search for the character you want. Click and drag that motherfucker into the scene. Uh, you can rotate him by pressing E, move him about by pressing W, and scaling him by pressing R. All right, to make the poses, you want to right-click on your character and click on Edit, a second from the top. You'll get a new screen. When that screen pops up, you want to click on Animation at the very top right. You can edit um, straight away if you want to in that pose. Or to make life easier and make things a lot quicker, you can go into the bottom right of the screen in the asset browser and look for a animation that's already in the game. Double click on that 
and then you can scrub it left and right to find the closest pose to what you want and then edit it from there. To create the pose, you want to click on the body part you want to move and then move it around until you're happy with it. You can use a prop to template where you want your hands and fingers to go. To move this, you click in the search bar at the top left in Skeleton Tree and type Weapon. Then click on Weapon 1 Socket. You then move the prop to assist you in creating the pose you want. To remove or change the prop, you right click on the Weapon 1 Socket and click on Remove All Attached Assets. Then just right click on it again and choose on Add Preview Asset. And then you can choose your desired prop from that list. You can type it in as well to get an easier search. Once you're happy with your pose, click on create asset at the top left. Create animation and create pose. You can now save this to your folder and name it. To put the character in the pose you just made, Click on your character and click on the animation mode drop down box on the details window. Use animation asset and choose your pose you just made. And you'll then turn into that pose. If you fuck up like you now see me doing and totally forgot what you called the pose, you can go into your folder that you saved it in and double check what the name is there, which I'm doing. And there you go, you get your pose back. Don't be like Wellesley, don't be thick. To add a weapon, let's go to the content browser, making sure skeletal and static mesh are enabled. Search for the asset you want and drag it into the scene. Once you've finished moving that weapon into the place it needs to be, Again, thinking back, you had the prop weapons, it should be quite easy to fit into the hands now. Once all that's done, you now just make your scene. There are two main ways to capture your scene. The first way is a high res screenshot, which is straight out the editor. And the second is a capture of an actual render in the sequence, which gives you more better pictures. You can change the focus and all the camera stuff. To make a high res screenshot, uh, just click on the small arrow next to the perspective tab at the top left and click on a high resolution screenshot. Scroll to 4.0 and hit the camera at the bottom right. That then takes a screenshot of the scene. And then if you're quick enough at the bottom right of the screen, you can click on the link and it takes you to where the file has been saved. Then for a render, you'll need to drag a cinematic camera from the cinematic actor tab. Then right click on the camera on World Outliner and click on Pilot Camera. Next you'll need the sequencer. So for that you need to go to Window Cinematic Sequencer. Next we go to Cinematics at the top, Add Level Sequence, then you just name and save to your folder.
exit the pilot view, add the camera to the sequencer by dragging it from the world outliner to the sequencer. Now click somewhere on the timeline and use control scroll to expand it. Now move the green and red lines to surround the frame. Click the render icon and choose image JPG no audio, choose your resolution and compress down to 80. Now pick your directory and name the file. You want to override the game mode um, this is so you don't have the time in the top of the screen like at the start of rounds and stuff like that. So you just get a clear image. You just want to type in game mode and scroll all the way down to get the very default basic game mode and click that. Tick both cinematic boxes. And then type in the frame that you're using for your cinematic shot. So for instance mine was 14. So I put start at 14 and then finish at 15. Now click create movie and this is where you wait. It takes a very long time and if you have a sort of lower end computer it may crash or freeze your computer. So make sure you save. Just close that window and your render is saved. If you need more help or I've just created such a shit tutorial, uh, just reach out to me and I'll try and help.